Ah. All right, here we are. Happy Spiritual Sunday to all of us. Okay, so let's get started as we do every week. We start with our affirmation. The affirmation, especially now it's 2023, we're in a new um, 1% year. We have an opportunity of setting a pattern. It's still the first month, so we want to set a new pattern, yet a higher. Those of you who've been with us for a while, we say this every time we meet. The Kabbalists teach us that every day is brand new. The trouble is, we tend to carry the same old, same old from day to day. So let's, okay, so let's make the effort, see, the celestial music. So let's make an effort that every day, moving forward, it's going to be a new, not only a new day, but it's a new us. That's what we want to do. So here you go, for those of you here, we're going to say together, we say it together, consciousness is everything. I raise my consciousness today to see the miracles and wonders of life. I commit myself to behave with greater love, compassion, and kindness towards all human beings. And we're about to dig into one of the simplest, yet deepest, and most profound concepts in Kabbalah. So I want to start like this, because what's going to happen, just be prepared, every time there's an awakening of light, every time you and I have an opportunity to reveal light, the opponent in our head is going to try and create resistance. Because like a parasite, which is why I like that concept, like the parasite we put in our head called that opponent, it only exists on the energy that a person will give it. So the moment that there's a possibility that some of that parasite's energy is going to be taken away, it's going to activate a program inside that opponent to try and distract people, um, distract them, bring them into denial, uh, disbelief, anything but take back the light from the parasite and reveal it as light and blessings and clarity and harmony and order in our life. So be prepared. So this is from the book, Wisdom of Truth, Rav Ashlag, the founder of the center. And I'll try and just get the couple things that I want us to focus on. He says, first, we must understand that the creator is the absolute good. The creator is the absolute good. That is, the creator cannot possibly cause anyone any grief. If you hold just that thought in your mind, it wipes out probably 99% of what people believe religion has taught them. That God could punish, God could curse, God could be jealous, God could cause or allow any bad thing to happen. Absolutely not. And here's Rav Ashlag in his way. This is basic knowledge. Since a healthy mind clearly sees that the basis of all evil doers can be defined as the desire to receive, meaning that out of the raging desire to receive goodness and gratify oneself, one meets his desire by hurting others because of the desire for one's own gratification. So the creator, the light force, is the absolute and only good, and the only reason that there's any negative behavior, you, me, or anyone on earth, is because of our desire to receive oneself alone. Instant gratification, temporary fulfillment. The chaos, the discord, the unnatural disasters, anything that you look at in this world or in your life that is not absolutely good means that you are not seeing the light in that situation, nor in those people. And so just leaving that aside now, so if we'll hold that thought that in essence there is only light in the universe, 
our life will be much easier, simpler, and more merciful, as we're about to see. So this concept, Kabbalistically, is called the singularity. Because that's it, it's singular. There's only good in the universe, there's only the light of the Creator, there's nothing else. Nothing else. Only the light of the Creator. In us, all around us, in the universe, everywhere. So the first thing is to realize if we don't see that, it's our illusion. If we're not seeing good everywhere in everyone, it's our illusion. It's our blockages. It's not because the Creator made a mistake or the Creator can do anything negative. As you and I keep learning here and keep emphasizing, it's our free will that determines what this world looks like. Nobody else. Singularity also means that the universe is moving in one direction and one way only. Can't move in opposite directions. What's the direction? From the endless world through what we call in this world the Garden of Eden, where we messed it up, through the path back to the Garden of Eden. But this world is moving in one direction, which is simply for the good of every human being, to ultimately manifest what the Creator's desire in creating us in the endless world was, to give complete and absolute good to all of its creation, meaning you and me. That's the way the world is moving. It doesn't go backwards. It doesn't go in any other direction. It is moving, let's call it from beginning to the end, forward. All good, all the time. So it's interesting. I've heard this for years. And as I've come to really contemplate this idea of singularity more and more in these last few weeks, I remembered something so simple. What does it mean when we say cause and effect? If you think about it, cause and effect means every action. Science tells us, right? Every action, they call it an equal and opposite reaction, but let's just take the essence. Every action creates an effect, a result. We're not in charge of the results. We're not in charge of what will come back. We're only in charge of the cause, not the effect. But there's an exact cause and effect to everything. And as I've shared recently with some of my students and my children, because of a few past life visions I've had, very impactful, I can tell you there is not anything that happens to us in any way, shape, or form that is not exactly cause and effect. And as I was thinking about that, I remember, here's the simple thing that the Kabbalists write, not a blade of grass grows. A blade of grass, not a human being, not an animal, a blade of grass. Not a blade of grass grows until an angel strikes it to say grow. That's the detail of cause and effect. So when you hear yourself say, oh, that was a mistake, that was an accident, that was random, that's chaotic, that's circumstantial, that's happenstance. What does it mean? You are not seeing the light. You're not seeing the hand of the light in that moment. You're seeing a completely other system. But that other system doesn't exist. You've made it up. You've decided there's no creator, and you've decided that the world is random, that there's not cause and effect, at least in that moment. Think about that. Can there be anything else but the infinite power of the light, the Creator? Nothing. Because if there were two powers in the universe, if there really were a force of good and bad, why is nature so perfectly operating that we can predict years past years forward, when the sun will rise, when the sun will set, things like that. Because imagine if there were really an active force of chaos that could contradict the all good of the absolute good of the Creator, then why would it let things be harmon harmonious? Right? Maybe the sun wouldn't rise and set. Maybe the stars and the planets wouldn't operate. Maybe the earth wouldn't turn. 
right? How many of you think when you have a little bit of difficulty, a discord with somebody, what are you in essence saying? They're trying to turn my world around, right? And that's just a person. So if there were really a force called the devil, equal and opposite to the creator, why isn't it trying to put the brakes on the earth? Or the way things operate in nature? Wouldn't that create a lot of chaos? If that's the purpose, no. Rav Ashlag and all the great Kabbalists are telling us there's only one direction, one singularity, one way to go. And only one force in the universe. So we've got to start letting go of anything but that. And realize then, in your own life, who created what's going on in your life? Yeah, I can already hear it. That parasite in your head going, well... Chaim doesn't know, my mother, father, my brother, my sister, the kids at school, growing up, my husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, you're giving me all the other people who've created your life. No, absolutely not. And the main lesson today, singularity and accountability. Take responsibility for every action you ever did. Because that's why you're right here now. You and I are here together, whether you're around the world or you're here in this room, because of every choice you ever made, let's say since you were 13. Every choice took you in a direction that ultimately the totality of all those decisions brought you here now. Sure, you could tell me, well, they made me do this, they made me do that, they forced me this, they forced me that. You can try and say that. And let's even say, just hypothetically, because I don't believe it's true, but hypothetically, let's say there were those situations in your life. If you would look back objectively at anything that you would even consider close to that, I guarantee you, less than 1% of every choice you've ever made. Where somebody actually tried, and you would say did, force you into it. Somebody calls you the nastiest name you ever heard. Are they actually forcing you to let those dirty words come out of your mouth? Did they control your mouth? No or no? <laughs> Usually one the opposite of what we say, right? They didn't force it. You let it out. You'll say what they made me say it. No, your mouth caused it. Your brain decided to move the mouth to say those things or to do those actions. They didn't grab your hands and do those actions. You did it. So we decide, and here we go. You choose. If the universe and you hold this consciousness is moving in one direction, then we're choosing either to go with the flow or to fight the flow. So as I was coming here this morning and thinking, you know, like sometimes you see these big raging rivers, right? When there's a storm or whatever and the river's going, you know, the rapids going in one direction. So you can either go with it and try and you know, adjust how you're going to go, maybe to save yourself off the side of the, of the river or whatever, or you could try and swim upstream against it. Not going to work. And certainly when the universe and the infinite power of the light is moving in one direction, there's no way we can go backwards. No way we can fight that. We can try temporarily to fight it. How? Blame, anger, victimization, jealousy. Like the Robin Karen used to call it, hugging your chaos. You could try and hug your chaos and fight the flow of the light that wants you to have eternal bliss, that wants you to have the solutions and the answers and the healing from anything that you're in now. You can fight that. It's your free will. But realize you're still going in the same direction. There's no two directions. Even we say reactive, proactive, and all of that, still in one direction. Still in one direction. Why? Think. How many times think of your situations? When you try and hold against the light, how many times does it happen in this? If you'll start to watch, this is what goes on. A person will hold on to their fear, their anger, their guilt, their shame, their animosity. Think right now. Any of you have any of those? Jealousy, insecurity, anything like that? Tell me how great it makes you feel. Oh, if it's awful, why do we hold on to it? Why? No, but if it hurts, I don't hold my hand on a hot stove 
and say, gee, it must be my tikkun, it must be my lot in life, they're forcing me to do it, it's the way I grew up, it's what my family told me. No, it hurts, you let go. Then you might want to look who turned it on and didn't do whatever after that, but you immediately want to do something. So the Kabbalists tell us, and your own life experience will show you, every time you try to hold on to pity, victim, anger, jealousy, insecurity, judgment, whatever it is, at some point, because the universe is pushing forward, the pain is going to be so overwhelming, you will have to change. If you go on in the rest of the book, that's essentially what Rav Ashlag will say. Either people will change because they want to go with the flow of the light and all the blessings, and they want to speed up their process to have all their blessings in a more merciful way, or they'll wait till the pain is so overwhelming they have no choice. But there's no other option because it's singularity. Only one direction. Only good. There's no evil people. There's people who can do bad things. Because we decide... Not the Creator and not anybody around us. We decide what our future is going to look like by the choices we make. And we determine those choices by our consciousness. So if a person believes there's another force than the Creator, that's how they're going to live their life. Split, like, like um, um, schizophrenic. One moment nice, one moment bad. One moment happy, one moment sad. One healthy, one sick. It's the way it's going to go. Not because that's what's true, because that's the free will we've been given, how to use the light, the singularity of force. Simple. So stop fighting the flow. That's the paradox of it all. The universe already gave us, the Creator gave us in the endless world, absolute eternal bliss. All the power and ability to manifest it in our life, to literally live in heaven on earth. And we're fighting it with what we think is our stupid brain. I'm going to make my money this way. I'm going to do this thing this way. I'm going to hoard my stuff like this. I'm going to be angry at them. All that stuff. We think that's smart. No, stop. Stop, wake up, and look. Look objectively at your own life. Forget about anything else. So like we often say, and you've already heard, it's just we tend sometimes to forget. When those negative emotions wake up, we forget. It's not what happens to us that determines our future. It's how we respond to what happens. So, all of your reactivity right now, the anger, the fear, insecurity, guilt, shame, you've been holding on. How do we know? Well, think. Usually it's, in ref well, okay, it could be anything. People will say about people they know. Usually I hear it first about a relationship. Yes, I was in this relationship. I thought they were so great and wonderful. Then I realized all the baggage they were carrying. What does it mean, all the baggage? And why did they carry it? If they're carrying it, why didn't they let it go? You go to the airport with your suitcases, right? Do you check it in? Yes, so you let go of it. You let them take it and they put it in the plane and all of that. So why are we holding on to our baggage from when we were kids? My mom didn't give me what I wanted. I was so hurt, so since six years old, the 50-year-old is still carrying that bag 44 years. They have every free will in the world to let go, but they're still carrying it. Why? Because the opponent said, give me the energy, give me your energy, give me... You hold the resentment, you hold the jealousy, you hold the insecurity, you hold all of that. Meanwhile, while you're carrying that bag, I'm going to take your light. Stop carrying the baggage. Realize how you respond determines your future. Singularity. And yes, that means everything that's ever happened to you that you used to call bad is for your good. For your good, because sometimes... Look at your friends, because it's always easier to see other people than ourselves. Why do we learn? Okay, forget it. Let's go to a bigger picture. Why do we learn history, supposedly, so we won't make the same mistakes over and over again? Yet the paradox is, if you look at history, we've been making the same mistakes over and over and over again anyway. Why? Because everybody's giving in to their illusion. Well, that was 400 years ago, and they didn't know what we know. Or that was those people over there and they didn't see it this way. Or this is a whole different thing. And I'm going to say this, and if it pushes your buttons, please, before you run away, at least call me, we'll talk, and we'll look at it differently. Humans in humanity to human beings. 
since Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, right? Two brothers. One killed the other and buried him, and that was that. Has it changed since? Is there still killing going on? Oh, but the illusion will say no. But back then, he took a rock and he beat him. And then they took sticks. And then they took arrows. And then they made a gun. And then they made a bomb. And then they, so we think it's changed. But in the end of the day, does it really matter whether it's a car accident, an illness, or an intentional killing? The person's dead. Death has been on the landscape of this world since Adam and Eve. Since you and me as Adam and Eve disconnected from the tree of life. Because we choose the illusion. So we're sitting today with a possibility of waking up and say, uh-uh, there's only one force in the universe and I want to live my life accordingly. Because not only is there perfect light out there, and not only is there perfect light in every other person on earth, there's also perfect light in me. Oh, I can hear it now. Yes. Chaim's right. There is perfect light in me, but not in them. Because look what they've done. Yes. Well, look in the mirror. Tell me you never did anything you're ashamed of. It may not be murder, rape, robbery, all that horrible external and extreme stuff, but have you ever been ashamed of the way you spoke to somebody, a little bit of your insensitivity, a little bit of your impatience? Okay, same thing, just different intensity. So if we are pure and perfect beings alive, so are they. They just haven't learned enough yet how to not do the extreme negative stuff where we're only doing minor negative stuff. But it's still negative. It still adds into the cosmos. One negative action times 8 billion people, that's a lot of negativity. So don't say mine doesn't count because it's only a little bit. It all adds up. It all adds up. So think, uh, and okay, we could talk one quick story. Well, while I'm telling you the story, think where in your life you've seen something that initially you thought was bad and it turned out good in the end. Think of that. Because that's what we're really talking about. If something we initially thought was bad turned good, we've seen it happen already in our life, then it's up to us now. What we're learning now and everything you've ever learned in the center is a ways and means to make that happen. They throw bad at you, you turn it into good. That's what we're learning from Kabbalah 1 forward. That for me, if you really listen to what you're hearing here, now, and you've taken Kabbalah 1, now you understand. As I always share with you, Kabbalah 1, even though we say it's the first course and the foundational and basics even, some people, the most deepest course we have. Because it teaches us singularity. May not say that word, but now you look back on it, you see that's all we talk about. Kabbalah 1 is, yes, how the universe came about, what we're here for, all of that. But at the end of the story, you look back at singularity. Everything in this universe is for your good. And here's the methodology we call the proactive method, how to turn chaos to order, darkness to light, how to turn curses to blessings. That's in your hand, not theirs. They throw a curse at you, you turn into blessings. There's a very interesting biblical story like that. Go back and read it. Bilam, the most powerful sorcerer ever in history, tried to curse you and me, the spiritual people, and because we were unified and we were in the singularity of consciousness, all of his curses turned to blessings. Because you can't put darkness in the light. One of my favorite things. If you walk in a dark room and you got that little thing called a flashlight, you turn on the flashlight, the darkness disappears. Yes or yes? How many of you have ever gone into a, light, a room filled with light with a flash dark and put a beam of darkness in the midst of the light? No such thing. But we can do it temporarily the way we behave. Oh, anger, jealousy, e ego, greed, fear, stinginess, insecurity, guilt, shame. Sure, temporarily you're in the dark. But you're sitting in an eternal bliss, infinite light, holding on to your darkness. It's like you d took a big blanket, you put it over your head, I refuse to see the good in the universe. Stop refusing. Don't tell me they made you put the blanket over your head. Don't try and think they made you do it. No, there's no such thing. You do. You do look at Joseph, the story of Joseph. He was sold. He was hated by his brothers on the external story. Make sure that's clear. He was accused of false things, all this stuff. But the Kabbalists teach us, no, through the whole thing. 
He had absolute peace and serenity because he knew everything was for good. He held that consciousness. So he was at peace all along. And in the end of the story, became second to Pharaoh. He saved literally the whole world. Not just his family, the whole world. Because he kept that consciousness of the light. The light is everything. The light is all. The light is in me and them. And everything that happens to me is for my good. Pay off my debts from the past. How many of you can admit, and you don't have to raise your hand, but at least think of it, that somewhere in your 10, 20, 30 years ago, you behaved, let's call it short-tempered, impatient, maybe a little um, um, critical of someone. Can you, can you remember at least one incident? I know you're all so holy, there's maybe only one, but at least think of one. What would be, if that's the cause, what has to be the effect of that behavior if you didn't change it? If you don't go, didn't go back and apologize, what's going to be the effect of, let's say, your impatience? Your impatience is somebody, you let a few bad words go out. You don't go back and apologize, and you don't make any effort to change. Cause and effect, what's going to come back? Somebody's going to be bad words. Cause and effect, yes? But because it took 10 years, they did it. And you say, oh my God, how could they say that to me? How could they do such a thing? I'm such a nice, kind person. And maybe all those years after that you were. But you didn't fix that one thing. So the one thing had to come back because the universe is moving in one direction. And any negativity we have has to be purified in that one direction. Has to be removed through the light. So you can't hold on to it because the end of the story, we're all going to reveal 100% light. That's the singularity. Let's call it from zero, revelation of our soul's light, to 100%. So at 100%, you can't hold on to a tiny bit of fear, insecurity, anger, jealousy, greed, all of that. Can't. So somehow it's got to be cleansed. So either we do it our, on us or we do it forced by the universe. And this is where it goes. This is where it goes. And I hope you've been thinking about how something bad turn good for you. Because if it could happen once, you can do it more. Because you're in control. So again, just to make it clear, I'm not endorsing the fact those people did or said what they did. They set up their own cause and effect, it's coming back to them. I don't want to be in the place with them when it comes to hit them. You heard of something called collateral damage? I don't want to be collateral damage of somebody else's cause and effect. But heaven forbid we will be if we're still holding on to the hurt, the animosity, some discord with that person. Because like attracts like. So if they screamed at you and you got hurt and you're still holding the hurt and resentment, you're glued to them. So you may not have done anything reactive other than you're hurt, but you're glued to them. So wherever they go, you're with them. So yeah, maybe across the other side of the world, they're getting smacked by their cause and effect. Well, you're getting something similar because you're right there. Because you didn't change. You didn't forgive. You didn't apologize. You didn't transform it. There's no letting go. That's a whole other lesson we could talk about. But you didn't transform it. So you're still hanging out with them. How many people do you know, your friends telling you, they're still hurt over what their parents did? My mother died. I've told you that story many times. She died, I was 20. But for me, it was a great blessing. I made it a blessing. And I know, by again, things that I've seen and come to be aware of, that she did it for me. She had her side. I'm not saying, you know, in that way. But for me, it was a great blessing. Sure, did it hurt? Was it painful? Grief? Yes. But as I worked through that, it pushed me away from what I was going to do into this spiritual path, which has been tremendously powerful and blessings for me. So that's it. Now I know people also who've lost parents, lost relatives, and they're just wallowing in the mud. Pity, blame, grief, sadness. Or what are they going to do now? Okay, it's your choice. You, universe gives us free will. You decide. You choose. So, make my note, and then we'll talk about judgment or mercy. So, what's punishment? Right? You and I have talked about how the Kabbalists say the five books of Moses 
is true. Those people existed, those things happened, etc., etc. But for us, the more important part is the lesson, the technology it is showing us of the spiritual aspect realm of this universe, how we can use it today to overcome all the challenges, all the negativity, etc. How we can do it. So when the Bible says, oh, you know, if, you, if a person does X, Y, Z, then there's this punishment, this bad thing will happen. It's not God is going to punish. Think simple. What would you tell, or what did you tell your kids, or what were you told when you were growing up? When the garbage disposal is operating, do not put your hand in it. Yes? Or else what? God is going to punish the person who puts their hand in the garbage disposal while it's running with a big cut or maybe worse. Right? It's all God's fault. It's not the stupidity of putting their hand in revolving sharp blades. Right? It's God's punishment. So when we say, oh, so what do they talk about in religion when they say punishment, punishment? No, it's the fact that we didn't see cause and effect. We didn't see what we did to bring that back on us. And sometimes it's not this life. Maybe it's a past life. Without the details, about 2,000 years ago, I killed somebody out of my anger. This person was in my life in this lifetime. And for 20 some odd years, whatever they could do to needle me, poke me, criticize me, this and this, 20 years, I couldn't figure out why from the first day I met them. Then I had this vision after they were out of my life. I have this vision that I killed them, got angry, something they said and did. I just pulled my sword out, hacked them to death right there and then on the street. When I saw that, oh, thank God, all I had to put up with is the needling, the criticism like this. I didn't have to die because I killed them. Because the transformation I had made from that lifetime and through this lifetime, with all that I've done in the center up to that point. So when you're looking at the stuff in your life, but you can say, yeah, but I've been scanning the Zohar, and I give charity to the center, and I help out, and I tell people, and I take classes, and I support the, the scholarship fund and all of that, then when something happens, realize it's pennies on the dollar for what you may owe. That's how I'd look at it. Put up with a little criticism and, you know, embarrassment or something instead of dying. Yeah, pennies on the dollar. It's still pennies. You still got to pay, but I'd rather pay pennies than the whole dollar if you're following the idea. So this is what the Kabbalists say when they're talking about, like well, when people say, but there's two paths, and even when you hear it, we say there's the path of judgment and the path of mercy. Those are not two distinct paths out of this singularity we're talking about. They're within the singularity. Right? To get from Boca Raton to Orlando Disney World. That, in our simple analogy, is a singularity, right? We're traveling from Boca to Orlando. But the way that a person can go that's still in the one direction, with the one intention of getting to Disney World, is how? Technically, a person could go via Los Angeles. They could drive all the way west to Los Angeles and all the way back east to get to Disney World. Yes, they could. It's their choice. They could go in Florida, all along the coast, all the way up, and then when they get near Orlando, cut across. They could do that, or they could just go the direct route. You might say there's many paths, but it's still in a singularity of from Boca to Disney World, Orlando. So the same thing. So there are paths of judgment and mercy, but they're both pushing us in the same direction. The trouble is, the path of judgment is a lot more painful. So here's how it goes. Judgment is the pain and suffering people have to go through as long as they're pointing the finger at somebody else. They made me do this. It's their fault that I don't have this job, that person, this thing, whatever it may be. As soon as it's not in your responsibility, as soon as you're taking it out of your control, then it's going to be extremely painful until there's enough pain to wake a person up that they'll change. That's pain and suffering. Yes, tell yourself, enough is enough already. I don't want any more pain and suffering. So then what's the way of mercy? The way of mercy is not, please God, take it all away. Doesn't work. 
We said God is absolute good. So if that's true, and like attracts like, or you can only see what's in your own mind, so think in those simple terms. If the Creator, as Rav Ashlag we read in the beginning, is absolute good, then the only thing metaphorically, because the Creator is not a being, the only thing that the Creator can see metaphorically in this world is not the chaos. The Creator can only see heaven on earth that exists just covered up by us and 8 billion pure and perfect beings of light. Because the Creator is pure light, can only see pure light. You and I can only see anger, jealousy, greed, ego, because we have some of it. So we're familiar. If you had never seen, like, you know, if a person's born colorblind, and they've never seen the color blue, or green, or red, can they explain it to you? No, they have no concept. They have no concept, but you and I have seen blue and red and green, so we can distinguish them. So because we've had jealousy, fear, anger, all that stuff, so we can see it. But if we never had it, we wouldn't be able to see it. We'd never recognize it. So the Creator doesn't see it. So the way of judgment, painful. The way of mercy is when I decide I'm not going to be a victim. I'm not going to blame anyone. Where I am now is based on every choice I ever made. And if you're willing to keep it that big, this life and every past life, Every choice has led me to be right here, right now. January 8th, 2023. Who I am, what I am, what's in my life, what's in my head, all of that, is my choice. The Creator gave us, me, you, and everyone else, a soul full of light, all the resources, all the capability to have eternal bliss. But we have to use it like anything else. We have it, it's up to us. I have a cell phone. If I learned how to use everything in it, I could use everything in it. What I don't learn to use, I have no benefit. Is that God's fault? Is it the cell phone's fault? Is it the cell service fault? No, it's me. And I don't call it a fault. I just haven't chosen to do it, and it's not a problem for me. What's a problem for you? Stop and think. How have you allowed it to be a problem? Somewhere back in your past, how did you create it to be a problem? So the way of mercy is taking responsibility and saying, no, I'm in control of my life, and today I'm deciding, yes, I will go back, I will forgive, I will apologize, I will do what I need to do to clear out all my spiritual mud, to get rid of all those blockages that have kept me imprisoned in whatever the negative experiences are. Because the prison door is open. It's unlocked. We just didn't push it and walk out. We've allowed ourselves to live in it. And I'll share you this story also. 2005, when I first moved to Florida, I went with a couple of students who were very uh, involved in our Zohar Project Florida, went up to uh, Tallahassee to meet with the head chaplain because we wanted to get Zohars in all the prisons. I mean, what better place? Well, every place is better, but you put in the prisons and all the people who've done such things to end up there, you wake up the light in their soul, maybe they will go out and not come back. Because the sad part is, whatever it is, 80% of the people who are in prison end up back in prison anyway. Why? Because they allow that same consciousness to control them. So we went up there and we met with the chaplain, explained what the Zohar is, why we're doing this, da 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 And he shared something with me that was shocking. He says, even if a person is in jail, I think if I remember right, like nine months, something like that, to a year. Now, there's not really a long time, but nine months to a year, they will get out, and unfortunately, the vast majority will still live, because he often got calls from the spouses or the girlfriends or whatever, asking, you know, he, the one who was in prison, he's still living as if he's in a six by nine cell. He's in his own apartment, in his own house, whatever. But every day he's putting the shoes under the bed, he makes the bed, and he kind of keeps in that six by nine space. Even just after nine months to a year. So think about your bad habits. Think about the negative thoughts you're holding on. You say, yeah, because you, you had it since you were 12, 20, 30, maybe it's 10, 15 years now. You've just allowed yourself to be in that six by nine box but there's no real 6 by 9 box around you. Like, they're not in a prison, they're in their own house, it's open, they can go and do, but they've allowed their consciousness to be blocked. 
So you and I want to start waking up. And yes, what's one of the most powerful things is to see singularity from your point of view. And again, from your point of view, there is nobody in your world but you. Nobody. Because this is the root of how we can live our life in a way that will be merciful transformation, that will get us faster down the road to our peace of the Garden of Eden, our peace of eternal bliss, heaven on earth. When we are willing to remember, keep in our mind, there's only the light of the Creator, singularity in one direction for my good, and that everybody is a reflection of me. Everyone and everything. So when you encounter someone that reflects good, that's also it's a reflection of us. But I think the more effective, practical part is when I see something I considered not so good in them, I have to look at myself now and say, okay, how, in what way is that in me? And it may not be identical, right? You may look at a person that you know they are just a, um, what they call it, compulsive liar. Just lie, 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 and you say to yourself, no, I can honestly say, never lied in my life. That could be true. But when you think about why are they lying, to get away with something, not to take responsibility for something, to try and ingratiate themselves to other people, tell me you never did anything like that. So it may not be lying, but in essence, the same thing. You ingratiate yourself by someone else, or whatever it may be, get out of something, some way, shape, or form. So yes, don't look if, look how. How are they reflecting something in you? Because when you find that spot of mud in you, you can wash it away and you're better off. But if you're still going to say, oh no, I'm nothing like them, I don't have any bad like that, so the mud stays on you. You can pretend all you want. But until you wash off your mud, it doesn't go away. I can't wash off yours, you can't wash off mine. We can help and support each other, we can encourage and motivate each other, but we can't do it for anybody else. This is why the Rav and Karen, and mostly Karen's input, created Kabbalah centers. Like-minded people who really want this can join together, support each other, not only in the, the things we do with each other, but also just energetically. The same way you walk into somebody's house, could look like, what are they called? You know, some perfect house. Everything designed just right, this and this and this, but you can't wait to get out. The energy in the house is horrible. Then you can walk in other houses that look lived in, and you just want to sit there forever. You just feel so good. So it's not about what it looks like on the outside. It's what's going on in the inside. So don't look at the outside. Well, but that's them, and they did this, and they said that. No, take advantage of it. And it is a great advantage. What can I fix about me? So how do you do it? Be willing to forgive, to apologize, to let go, to be more generous, more humble, more kind. Whatever that is that's awakened in you, pause and do its opposite. Awakened ego, pause and act with humility. Awakened jealousy, pause and act with gratitude. Awakened anger, pause and act with forgiveness and compassion. You walk away better. Forget what they'll think, what they're saying, whatever. No, you walk away better. More blessing, less chaos. You got more light shining out of you, more light things will be drawn to you. Person walks away with more darkness, more dark things will be brought to them. It's a simple concept. Singularity. There is only the law of cause and effect. The universe is only walking in one direction. Everything is moving. So even though we say the way of judgment and mercy, but they're both pushing people that way. Overwhelming pain through the path of judgment or uncomfortable transformation through the path of mercy. But you've got to do the actions. You've got to pay your debt. The Rav used to say you either pay up front with a discount We'd call the way of mercy, or you pay later with a penalty, but everybody pays. Everybody pays, because it's cause and effect. So, singularity means I'm the only person in my world. Even you, all of you that, that I'm looking at now, you're all reflections of me. That's why I only think good and wonderful things about you. <laughs> okay. So then everything is a reflection, and I want to take advantage of that. And as we will live that, so whatever I see out there, I want to look in me, how is it there, and I want to fix that.
And as I go about doing that, as you go about doing that, and you start living this consciousness, this singularity, and I encourage you, you can listen to this again, listen to yesterday, Michael Berg, or last year, if you understand from this portion last year, it was also on singularity. Same concept, different ways. So as we'll start to live it, that's when we're living in heavenly consciousness. Because if you're only seeing the light, you're only experiencing the light. And then even when those bumps in the road, so to speak, the effect comes back at you, you're seeing it as light. Thank you, I could pay my debt pennies on the dollar, I'm happy. So rather than have the collector come to take the dollar on the dollar, if I can pay pennies on the dollar, great. So I still feel good, I still feel happy. So as we're living this consciousness, and we're living in that heavenly consciousness as we're walking through life, we'll walk with greater peace. You'll walk with greater serenity. Not only that, but you'll influence everybody around you to start doing the same thing. Because like will attract like. You'll start drawing out of them. Their consciousness of singularity. Their true, per pure and perfect being of light. And then as you're walking that serene path, you're just speeding up the process to walk into your piece of the Garden of Eden, to get to your piece of heaven on earth, where there will be nothing but just peace, harmony, unity, and love. God bless. So as we always do, and first and foremost, I want to thank you all and those of you who are following us online. We cannot complete the mission of the center without your support. I mean, it's simple. The Rav told us many years back, we have the technology. We have the Zohar. We know the Zohar is the ultimate tool to remove the angel of death and therefore stop all the chaos. But we don't have all the resources yet. So whatever you can give, and that's why we appreciate what you do share with us, but the faster you can help us ask your friends even, you know, I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but you know, we've had over the years, you know, people who ask their friends, you, ha you may have a lot of charitable friends. They just don't know about the Kabbalah Center. So tell them, look, you know, I go to the Kabbalah Center. I believe it's very important and impactful for all the people on earth. So if you'd like to do, you know, give some of your charity over here, please give it over here. Why not? Ask your friends. You now become the conduit for them to be able to give besides what you can give. So if you're understanding that there's the greatest, as they call it, return on investment for your charity and your donations here, and you can get other people to do the same thing, you're getting extra because you're getting them to also do that. So they're making more blessing on their investment, and you're helping them to get a piece of it. It's good for everybody. It's good for everybody. And I just want to make sure I remember, um, if something pushed your button today, those of you out there, or those of you who may be listening to this later, so contact me. I'm happy to sit with you and work through it. But just don't run away. You run away, you lose for sure. At least investigate. Yeah, it's not easy, because some people I know, and I've, I've worked with people who've gone through horrible things this life. So to try and think cause and effect and all of that, it's not easy. But I also know people who've done that. I have students who've gone through, I don't even like to say the words, but really horrendous things who have been able to transform and heal those things. And if they can do it, we can do it. So it's only a question of the effort. And the effort is based on our desire. So if you really have a desire to live your singularity of all good, then if you have a teacher, meet with a teacher. If you don't have a teacher, you want to talk to me so we can arrange to have that time also. And uh, also just on the, a simpler level here, please uh, tell people that this is again on Facebook, it stays on Facebook, and also probably today or tomorrow I'll put it on the YouTube channel. So that people can go on YouTube channel and see Spiritual Sunday from you know, years and years back, there's a couple hundred I think on there. Okay, let's take our moment um, to just bless the offering so that you put more energy in it it goes out more effectively through the projects of the center and comes back to you with greater blessing. So one is just to acknowledge with gratitude the Creator is our source. And therefore, as we share what the Creator's given us in all the ways and means, our talents and ability, our capability, in whatever way we have these resources, we want to share it out to the world to bring in enlightenment, illumination to the other eight billion parts of ourself. That our world will look brighter because we're shining more light into it. 
by supporting the projects of the center. And so we fill this offering with love, light, tremendous blessings, with a consciousness to reach out through the center to the heart and soul of every person on earth, awakening them to the true, pure, and perfect being that they are, and giving them that inner motivation to act with greater love and kindness and compassion towards all human beings. And together we say, Amen. So I also want to do, as we do each week, we're going to do a meditation on one of the 72 names, 72 names of God. For those unfamiliar, the Hebrew letters are not a construct of humanity. They're primordial. They come from the endless world, take on these shapes that we have called Hebrew letters, but each one is a particle of the infinite light of the Creator. So since eyes are the window to the soul, let the light shine out of the Mem, Nun, Kuf, this combination to overcome victimization, accepting responsibility, and taking greater control over our life through that responsibility for our actions. Not what they did, they're responsible for that, but we're responsible for what we do in response. So we want to just let the shapes mem nud kuf, just let them be engraved in your mind's eye. And if I can ask you to sit comfortably in your seat, feet flat on the floor, hands comfortably in your lap. Taking a few deep breaths, breathing in through the nose, hold the breath for a moment, exhale through the mouth. And if you can, breathe from the abdomen. The air is just the light of God in the form of air. That's why they've called it the breath of life. God breathed into human beings the breath of life. So we want to let that energy flow, creating that stronger circulation of the light force coming in through the inhale, activating more of the light in our soul from head to toe as we hold that breath for a moment, and then exhaling all of the blockages, anything that's not the light of the Creator. And so let's envision Mem, Nun, Kuf. Just see it just above your head, shining bright light emanating. You can feel its energy, the light of the Creator, love, compassion, warmth. This particular combination, activating the strength, the consciousness, the awareness to take responsibility for all our actions and to have the strength to pause when we're feeling our buttons pushed in a negative way and to be able to respond as a being of light, letting the light flow out of us into our world. So slowly bring the mem nun kuf through the top of your head and see and feel the light that shines from them, from this combination, bringing light clarity through the head, the brain, the mind, the consciousness, 
and let it continue through the neck, shoulders, arms, torso, just illuminating. And listen, maybe it also gives you a message how you've been blocked, where you've created victimization or blame. Focus with the intensity of letting the Mem Nun Kuf enter your heart and your soul, awakening this power, awareness, and acceptance. I am where I am. because of all the decisions I've made up to now. And I choose and decide today with the support of the infinite light of the Creator, channeling through Mem Nun Kuf, to act with greater love kindness, compassion, gratitude, generosity, humility, and apology. I decide to take control over all my actions, to express my true pure light beingness out into the world. As I shine light into the world to clearly see what I need to fix, how I can fix, and with this light the support to do the fixing. as I see all around me, my reflection. And I am grateful for the ability to pay pennies on the dollar of my spiritual debt because of this work. And as I see everyone in my world as that reflection, so I let a beam of light from my heart and soul shine out to their heart and soul. Every one of those eight billion extensions of me. awakening the light in them, supporting them from throwing the mud off them. And making my world more illuminated, more blessed, more peaceful, more unified and more loving. can see in my mind's eye how beautiful the world is in this illumination as I'm seeing with the eyes of the Creator. I can see what lies beyond the five senses, the physical material, to the truth, the unity of mankind, every human being as one soul. And 
and I can see and more and more feeling the Garden of Eden that exists on this earth. And with gratitude and growing gratitude, seeing the parts of the Garden of Eden I am living in and how it grows day by day. As I act more and more godlike, sharing more of my soul's light into the world. Accepting all that's come my way as for my good. And doing more and more every day to control my response and let it be as a conduit of the pure light of unconditional love, the pure light of the Creator. Just take note of the greater peace and that sense of true love in your heart right now. Let it stay with you and let it be your motivation and your drive to express that love more and more every day and more and more to all people on earth. And so let's take one more deep breath, anchoring this in, solidifying this new consciousness. And as you exhale, slowly opening your eyes. Thank you for those of you here. Thank you for those joining us online. So again, I look forward, please write me just in general, you know, how things go, what your transformation is, the miracles you have, and some of your questions. They may become the uh, subject of another Spiritual Sunday. God bless. Have a great afternoon, a great day, and a great week till we see each other again next week. Thank you for joining us. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to this channel that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Share the video with your friends, they can also benefit. And check out the website, www.kabbalah.com, that's K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H, for hundreds of articles and classes. Wish you an amazing day, and God bless.